Hi. In this module, we'll be learning about the internet. We'll see what exactly the internet is, how it works, and we'll take a look at the massive impact it has had on today's society. In this video, we'll get a high-level overview of what the internet is. We'll take a look at why it's so important in today's society. So here are some questions we'll be looking at. What exactly is the internet? How does it work? And what impact has it had on society? At a high level, the internet is really a philosophy of making information and knowledge open and accessible to all. Throughout history, information and knowledge have really only been available to a select group of people. With the internet, there's now a massive wealth of knowledge that is available to anyone with an internet connection. At a physical level, the internet is a network connecting networks. It is a network that spans across the entire globe and connects individual networks of computers so that any two computers on the globe can communicate with each other. And it only is able to work this way because it is built on open and agreed upon protocols. And what do I mean when I say protocols? Well, a protocol is a widely agreed upon set of rules that standardizes communication between machines. Without a protocol, it would be as if all machines were speaking different languages. By deciding on a protocol, every machine agrees to communicate in the same way, interpret data in the same way, send data in the same way, and this allows any two machines who buy into this protocol to communicate to each other. And it allows all future machines to be able to communicate with present machines, again, by buying into this protocol. So really, what is the internet? The internet is a way for all machines to communicate with each other, and thereby a way for humans to communicate with each other. Any human with a machine that is online is able to communicate to any other human that has internet access. And this is huge. This is the first time this many humans have been able to communicate. So it may come as no surprise that the internet has gotten incredibly popular. In 2005, only 16% of the world was online. The majority of the developed world was online, but only 8% of the developing world had internet access. Fast forward to 2014, and we have 40% of the world online, 78% of the developed world, and only 32% of the developing world. Now that's in 2014, and we see that the majority of the world is still offline. So just imagine that. We take it for granted that the internet pervades so many aspects of our lives, but the majority of the world does not have internet access. So imagine your life without the internet, and consider the pros and cons of that lifestyle. So just to give you an idea of the massive amount of data that is able to flow through the internet every day, in one second we have over 7,000 tweets, over 2,000 Skype calls, over 53,000 Google searches, and about 2.5 million emails, most of which are spam emails. All in all, there is over 33,000 gigabytes of internet traffic per second. To see some more of these stats, you can go to internetlivestats.com. Now, because the internet has gotten so popular, it has been able to have a massive impact on our society. The internet has enabled collaboration across fields of study, across countries. It has enhanced communication. The spreading of information is higher now than it ever has been. The internet has enabled crowdsourcing. We can crowdsource solutions to problems or the funds to start a new project, for example. But it also comes with some downsides. There are very interesting legal and ethical concerns around anonymity on the internet, as well as censorship, which we'll get into later. So how exactly has internet affected communication? Well, email, video calls, and social media are just a few to name. Email has enabled instant communication that the postal mail service never could achieve. Video calls enable us to interact face-to-face -face with people from different countries, and keep in touch with friends and family overseas. And social media has transformed the way we consume news and stay up to date with the lives of our friends and family. But social media is not simply about selfies and status updates. Social media allows us to gather the entire online community behind important causes that we care about. For example, the Match for Lara campaign was a recent movement to diversify the bone marrow registry that got a lot of attention on social media and ended up being successful. Just searching hashtag Match for Lara on Twitter, you can see the incredible amount of attention that this movement got. So the problem was that since there were so few mixed-race people registering to donate bone marrow, minority patients were left without hope. The Match for Lara campaign shed a lot of attention on this issue, and as a result, people all over the world started registering to donate bone marrow. Lara ended up finding a match, and several other patients have now found matches as well. The internet also enables collaborative problem-solving at a massive scale. So here we have a screenshot from an online research video game called Foldit. So Foldit is an example of citizen science. And what that means is it's science that harnesses the problem-solving capacity of anywhere from hundreds to thousands of citizens on the internet 
to solve really complicated problems. So Fold It was an online game where players online would attempt to solve the folding structures of very important proteins. By determining the structure of these proteins, researchers are able to develop vaccines and understand diseases better. So once the Fold It game went live on the internet, players were able to produce an accurate model of an AIDS-causing virus in only 10 days. And this virus had been unsolved by computer simulations and researchers for 15 years. So the idea is, even if a team of researchers can't solve it in 15 years, by giving out this problem to the massive online community of the internet, the chances of one person or a group of people solving the problem skyrocket. So another example of problem solving that has been enabled by the internet is distributed computing. So an example of that is the folding at home program. So the problem is similar. We need to find out the complicated structure of these massive proteins. And researchers and simulations on single computers were not able to figure out the structure. So how folding at home works is people are able to donate computing power rather than personal puzzle solving time. So rather than a human logging on and trying to solve the puzzle, you would just install this program on your computer and your computer would then be part of a massive network of computing power that is working to simulate every possible combination and find the correct solution. So Folding at Home is able to harness the power of thousands of personal computers volunteering processing time. And this allows the program to compute exponentially more simulations than a single computer could. Folding at Home has led to breakthroughs in understanding Alzheimer's, Huntington's, cancer, and HIV. Another massive impact of the internet has been e-commerce. For example, online shopping has enabled us to buy directly from retailers rather than being at mercy to whatever prices are at our local shops. It allows us to easily purchase from other people who wouldn't have the funds to run their own physical store, but we can contact other people on the internet and buy goods and services from them. And we were able to find the best products at the lowest prices. Before the internet, you run the risk of being disadvantaged by your location or by having a lack of knowledge about the product. Now we're able to see ratings of products and compare prices across all retailers to find the lowest price. Another form of e-commerce that has been incredibly influential is crowdfunding. Websites like Kickstarter, Indiegogo, and Tilt allow individuals to contribute relatively low amounts of money to together fund projects, ideas, pieces of art. And this has allowed projects to get funded that potentially may not have worked out before the internet by going through traditional routes like loans from a bank. If enough people see value in something, the internet is able to bring those people together and have these ideas become reality. Another incredible impact of the internet is the access to such a wealth of information that never would have been possible before. There are several open databases of scientific publications on the internet, some of which are free and some of which are subscription-based. But this allows scientific papers to be read by anyone on the internet. It used to be that you had to be a graduate student at a research institution to gain access to these papers. But now anyone on the internet can read the cutting-edge scientific publications. But there's a big question as to whether access to all information is actually a good thing. For example, there's a website, WikiLeaks, that posts classified information that either governments or corporations are trying to keep secret. On one hand, this is a good thing because it promotes the transparency of information. It makes it so that corporations and the government can't keep secrets from its citizens. However, there is potential danger in having classified secrets being public. For example, our military or our national security could be at risk by posting our government secrets to the world. And of course, an incredible application of the internet has been online learning. It's happening right now. You're able to learn about the internet through the internet. We are seeing more and more classrooms and colleges becoming blended, that is using a combination of online learning and in-class learning. And there are online courses available in such a wide array of subjects. Whether you want to learn another language, or you want to learn to code, or you want to become a professional chef, there are online courses available so that people can educate themselves. Another incredible application of the internet is GPS, or Global Positioning System. GPS has completely changed how we navigate the world. It used to be that you had to learn how to read a map, and if you needed to get somewhere, you needed to bring a map with you. Now you can leave your home with just your smartphone, and you'll have no problem finding the place that you need to be. Technically, GPS does not require an internet connection because it uses other sensors, but an internet connection can help speed it up and provide other data around your position, such as images and directions and things like that. And of course, let's not forget entertainment. The internet has fundamentally changed how we entertain ourselves. Just take YouTube, for example. YouTube has enabled normal people to go viral. It has generated a new form of celebrity. There exist YouTube celebrities with hundreds of thousands of followers that make a living off of posting videos to an online community that supports them. There's also online gaming communities. Thanks to the internet, you can have a chess match with someone in another country who speaks a different language, or you could be playing in a video game with hundreds of other players simultaneously. 
And of course, memes are now a thing. The internet has produced some pretty interesting forms of entertainment. But in addition to all these great things, there are some complications that come along with the internet. There are several legal and ethical concerns that arise from the internet, including access to copyrighted material, anonymity, and censorship. So what I mean when I say access to copyrighted material? Well, thanks to the internet, there's several peer-to-peer -peer networks that allow people to share files that they have on their computers. This is completely fine if the files are their own creations, but oftentimes the content being shared is not owned by the people sharing it. It's easier than ever to distribute information or content that does not belong to you, such as copyrighted works of art or copyrighted software. There's also a big question around anonymity on the internet. How identifiable should an internet user be? On one hand, anonymity supports equality on the internet. If all users are anonymous, then users won't be targeted or discriminated against for things like gender or race because that information won't be available. However, having complete anonymity promotes cyberbullying. If all users are anonymous, then no one is accountable for their actions, and we see some pretty hateful things on the internet because of this. Censorship is also a huge issue that comes along with the internet. For example, should Google display search results that have explicit or illegal content, or should it filter them out? Should a seven-year-old be able to go online and see horrific images or pornographic images? And should a government be able to filter what content its citizens see on the internet? Ideally, we want the internet to be an open place where all information is available. But things get complicated because different governments have different laws. And certain internet services might be illegal in one country that aren't illegal in another. All in all, the internet has significantly impacted several areas, both positively and negatively. And it's all thanks to the ability to simply get information from point A to point B. So think about that as you're learning about how the internet actually works. That all of this, just to get bits from point A to point B, has had this incredible of an impact.